internets, Jesus loves you. My name's Cody and this is the Christian News Show we do on Tuesdays. And our first story of the day is about Sweet Jesus ice cream. I'm not entirely sure why this is a thing, but there is an ice cream company in Canada that is called Sweet Jesus Ice Cream. In their logo, they have an upside down cross and a lightning bolt. And so as you could imagine, there are a lot of Christians that are not a huge fan of Satan's favorite ice cream. Now, I think what they're trying to do is be kind of the voodoo donuts of ice cream. For those who don't know what voodoo donuts is, for one, they are absolutely delicious, but two, they also have some questionable marketing, such as drawing a pentagram on some of the donuts. I think the big difference between these two companies though is that voodoo donuts is trying to be weird and out there and that's kind of their whole thing. Like they're not hating on any specific religion except maybe voodoo. Whereas Sweet Jesus Ice Cream looks like it's trying to be edgy. It's obviously targeting the Christian faith. Like Voodoo Donuts is trying to be different, not controversial. Whereas this is obviously trying to be controversial for the sake of sales. And I mean, it is working. There's tons of Christian news companies talking about it. There are petitions being made and boycotts. And while I think it can make it infamous right now, I don't think that that infamy can really last. I think after a while, it's just not going to do well. Or you just become an ice cream shop that doesn't like Christians. And moving on, our next story takes place in Michigan. And on this show, we talk a lot about separation of church and state. By now, a lot of you already know usually my mindset when it comes to these things. But this story, I'm a little bit torn. So let's start with the basic facts. So we've got a cross that is standing on a Michigan state land. It's at the Waterloo Recreational Center in Jackson County. Then you have the Michigan Association of Civil Rights Activists saying, hey, we want the cross down. It doesn't make sense for it to be on state property. And so like I said, a lot of you already know me. You know that with that information, I would probably say, yeah, that makes sense. Go ahead and take the cross down. What gives me hesitation, though, is the fact that the cross has been there for 70 years. And there is nothing saying that it is a Christian cross, per se. And so my question is, at what point does it become a historical statue and not a religious one? At some point, you go from being freedom from religion to trying to abolish religion. It's when you start taking away the history of it all that I get a little worried. I think going on, our final story of the day is about an American pastor in Turkey. Now, Andrew Brunson is from North Carolina, but he has been in Turkey for the last 25 years. He was arrested by the Turkish government about a year and a half ago, and he just got his sentence. And he could be in prison for up to 35 years. Now, when you hear what he's been charged with, it does sound really serious. He's been charged with being a member of an armed terrorist group and military espionage. And if you're wondering what that armed terrorist group is, it is Christians. I'm not joking and what they're being armed with is what they're calling unconventional warfare, evangelism. Now, almost 99% of Turkey is Muslim, and so they believe that any kind of Christianity is actually trying to separate and cause problems for the Turkish people. What's really annoying about all this is that Brunson, it seems to be just kind of a pawn in an exchange. The United States has a man named Gulen, who Turkey says if they exchange for Brunson, uh, they will release him. But being that Brunson has been in Turkey for the last 25 years, I don't know how high of a priority it's going to be for the United States. I think the only way things change with this is if we have a campaign similar to Saeed Abedini's. And honestly, his story didn't really have a happy ending once he got to the United States, so I don't know if that drive is going to be there. Anyways, prayers out to Brunson and everybody else. I mean, there's so many other stories like this guy's. Um, just prayers that everything kind of works out for him and that he's able to be released sooner rather than later. And just really quick, I'm recording this actually after recording the rest of the show, but looking into it a little bit more, uh, as far as the espionage goes, he may have uncovered and taken government secrets. So according to Turkey, it is not just his Christian faith that is getting him targeted as part of a terrorist group. There might be a lot more to this than I had previously read into. Question of the day, do you think that the cross in Michigan should be removed because it's on state property, or do you think that it should stay because it is almost historical? 70 years is a long time. Maybe it's not long enough, though, to be historical in your mind. I want to know what you guys have to say, so please leave a comment in the comment section down below with your answer. Um, all opinions welcome. I'm really curious what you guys have to say on this one. As always, my name is Cody Armour, bringing you Christian news in a not-so-boring kind of way every Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Love ya. God bless.